the age of discovery, the age of colonization, were they good times? Were they bad times? This is where perspective comes in. Both of these eras had a lot of very long-term impact on American culture and civilization. Some of it was good, but some of it's not so good, particularly depending upon our perspective. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the European discovery of America and some of the implications of that. Stay tuned. So who gets credit for rediscovering America? 15,000 years after the first Asians entered the Americas, 500 years after the first Vikings entered the Americas, well, we give most credit to those who were active during the age of discovery. This was a period in which Europe reached out to the world and tried to profit from that reach. Um, but certainly the Americas were a major part of the age of exploration. The guy who got the most credit out of the deal was Amerigo Vespucci, who certainly sailed in the general area of North and South America a couple of times. And by luck, I suppose, uh, he managed to get his name onto the first maps that were made of the area. And so he gets credit coming years after Christopher Columbus, centuries after the Vikings, thousands and thousands of years after the Indian. So who did the colonization? That is probably the, um, the more important question because it impacted all the various cultures of North and South America over the long haul. And the leaders in this were the Spanish. Uh, they were the biggest colonizers. They were the earliest colonizers. But the Portuguese were certainly active and they walked away with the prize of Brazil, uh, which is a major country in South America. Um, the French made a good effort and they did um, well in Canada, at least for a while. Uh, the British had considerable success uh, on the uh, east coast of what was later to become the United States, the 13 original colonies. The Russians had a piece of North America, Alaska, which was later bought by the Americans um, at the time of the Civil War. Um, the Dutch also were there, and I don't see the Swedes listed, but the Swedes had small colonies also. So everyone was trying to get a piece of the action. But there really weren't that many people involved, certainly not for the first hundred years. We're talking about hundreds initially and then a few thousand, and yet by the end of the 16th century, hundreds of thousands and perhaps millions of Native Americans were dead. Who killed them? Cortez? Well, maybe. Uh, Bizarro? Maybe. Christopher Columbus? Maybe a few. But this is the big killer. This is the, the shadow immigrant that came with all the ships that were coming to um, North and South America, and that's smallpox and other viruses. Way before the Indians ever encountered the, uh, the Europeans, they encountered the smallpox because it jumped to the first person and it was soon off creating a, a pandemic, much in the manner that the, um, the Black Death decimated Europe Smallpox and similar um, viruses decimated the uh, American culture. So these large societies that were comparable at that point to those in Europe were collapsed. The Mississippians in particular 
disappeared. We hardly even know that they were there. Spain in America. Spain, as I mentioned, was the, the most aggressive, the earliest of the colonizers and the most ruthless. If the um, Americans, uh, Americas were christened with blood, certainly the Spanish did their share. Columbus came first in 1492, established some initial um, colonies on the islands, established the, um, uh, the economic factors that led to first Indian slavery and then slavery of Africans. Cortez came in 1510, 1520, between 1510 and 1520, he was very busy. He managed to collapse the Aztec civilization and to um, bring it to the ground with uh, 300 men. Um, one of his lieutenants, Pizarro, went south and managed to do the same to the large advanced uh, Inca civilization. The Portuguese were also busy and they primarily were at work on the east coast of South America. The, uh, a papal demarcation was um, actually worked out in 1494. That shows it did not take long before the disputes over territory became top level problems if Christopher Columbus arrives in 1492. And by 1494, we have the Pope involved in trying to settle disputes between the Spanish and the Portuguese on the newfound territories. The French, the French were more in the north. Uh, they also um, were in what became the American um, Midwest. Um, they, uh, their incursions were um, probably less bloody, um, but um, but certainly you know not blood three. The English came to the Americas later, but they came to stay. Uh, their colonies were established with more of a view to staying and growing. Um, the Spanish ventures, the Portuguese ventures um, uh, were less a movement of people from those countries to establish themselves in the new world uh, and more of an attempt to take charge of and manage the new world. The English actually established um, towns and economic uh, entities and uh, grew up from that. Um, first was Jamestown, um, established more by Cavaliers, and then Plymouth, which was established more by people that would have been aligned with the Protestant Revolution in England. Um, these were two factions that were soon going to come to war in England itself. And this has actually created a pattern in American culture that continued all the way up for uh, over 200 years into the Civil War, the South being more aligned with a Cavalier's view of the world, the North being more aligned with a um, Protestant, uh, Calvinistic sort of view of the world. This has been a very quick view of the age of discovery, the age of colonization, and the pattern of uh, settlement that took place in North and South America during the 16th and 17th century. Um, next, we're going to take a look at specifically how the original colonies that became the United States were established and some of the factors that influenced their culture and their attitudes and which led to the creation of the United States. Thank you and see you next time. Mm -hmm.